Okay, uh, hello English language students. This is an introduction to the difference model um, of genderlect. Um, and this, um, as you can see in the first PowerPoint bullet point, uh, is the next one after talking about the dominance model. Okay, so this can be seen as coming about in response to the dominance model, and it is critical of that way of looking at the difference between men's and women's speech styles. Uh, doesn't dispute that men and women have different speech styles, but offers a different reason for it. Um, and so in the dominance approach, the argument is that it's not, the difference isn't because men dominate or because women lack authority. Um, it's just that men and women do have different speech styles, and when they talk to one another, there is miscommunication between the genders which appears to be men being dominant and women lacking authority and being weak. Uh, so this is a big change from the dominance approach. In particular, uh, it avoids blaming men or women for these differences. So you could say it attempts to be more neutral or objective about what's going on if there is such a thing as different gender styles. Um, but it does believe in difference, hence the name, difference model. Um, and the difference it suggests is that in speech, women are more cooperative and men are more competitive in conversation. Um, and I guess maybe that shouldn't surprise any of us that that is um, a stereotype about men and women as well. I'm not saying that means it's true. I'm saying it means that when people go looking for these differences, maybe they are blinkered by what they already believe about men and women. Um, so in order to um, prove or um, investigate the difference model, the researchers will focus on single sex interactions. And from that, they'll produce evidence of each gender's uh, style. So when you think about the dominance approach, that always looked at mixed gender conversation. Because if you're going to talk about how men and women, or how men dominate women, then you need to look at men and women talking together. OK, so the first researcher we're going to talk about is a linguist called Deborah Tannen, um, and she produced a work in 1990 called You Just Don't Understand. Now, this is a work of popular linguistics, not really a work of proper academic research. There is some data in it. There is some reference to academic studies. But one of the reasons this work is criticised is it does include quite a lot of anecdotes and quite a lot of generalisations. Uh, but her argument is that men and women form different subcultures uh, and their speech styles are therefore completely different. Uh, now, this is one of the problems with this approach, because in order to argue that men and women are different subcultures, you kind of have to posit the idea that men and women spend most of the time only talking to people of the same gender. Because you think about other arguments where we talk about class or, gen or, or ethnicity or like age with teenagers, uh, we're kind of assuming that those people spend most of the time talking to people in that group. So I want you to think about, is that true? It might be. It might be true that you spend most of your time, most of your conversations are in single gender groups. But it kind of has to be for this argument to work. Um, and Deborah Tannen identified these different styles in a series of binary oppositions, which I'm now going to show to you. Excuse me, like this. So this is what she calls the female style and the male style. And they are the opposite of excuse me, the opposite of each other. Um, so she says, in conversation, the female style is to seek compromise, but the male style is quite often to be quite happy with conflict or possibly even to, to seek conflict. Um, she says that a female style is to offer proposals, uh, often starting with let's, let's do this, or asking a question, shall we? Yeah, whereas the male style is to give an order, not a proposal, but an order. Um, that the female style, now this is more to do with content of what you're talking about. Um, so the female style is often to talk about feelings. Uh, in the male style conversation, there will be lots of information, information exchange, people telling people stuff, factual stuff. Um, that a female style is to offer understanding, whereas in a male style, you, the male is much more likely to offer advice. Uh, an example she gives of this is um, a woman who had had uh, breast surgery, had a lump removed, and she'd said to her husband, oh, I don't like the way the scar has changed the shape of my breast. 
uh, and her husband said, well, you can always have plastic surgery. She said, I don't want plastic surgery. And he said, well, I don't want you to have plastic surgery. <laughs> and the idea is that what she wanted was him to say, oh, I'm so sorry, you don't like the look of your breasts. Whereas what he did was give her some advice because he thought she genuinely wanted to do something about it. So that's the idea of women seeking and offering understanding, whereas men would often give advice and try to fix things. Uh, the female style is to develop intimacy, um, uh, whereas the male style is often about being independent. And the female style is to offer support, whereas the male style is to sort of slightly fight over status and try to boost their own status in what they say and with what they say. OK, so that's Deborah Tannen. Um, but there's another difference researcher called Jennifer Coates, and um, I would suggest that this is better linguistic work. There's a lot more evidence to support it. She's got a lot of data and she's done some research for her. So she doesn't use the word subculture, but she does say that, and, and this is her talking about the female style. She does also talk about the male style. Uh, so she maintains that women form a speech community. So you might want to remember and go back uh, when we started talking about class, we talked about what is a speech community. Yeah, and speech community is a group of people with shared interests who spend a lot of time talking to one another. Um, and she identified these features of a female style. And she said that overlapping and interruption is common in women's speech, but that it's used collaboratively. So when a woman overlaps or interrupts another woman, they're not trying to take the turn, they're being supportive to build the conversation together. So what you'll find is the same feature could be mentioned by Lakoff and then by the dominance theorists and then by the difference theorists. What's different is how they interpret why that feature is there. Uh, so hedges, which Lakoff would have said are a sign of weakness and why women's speech is weak. Uh, Coates says, yes, women use like to mitigate. Yeah, that's what hedges do. They mitigate. They make less strong what you're saying. Uh, they mitigate the strength of the speaker's ideas and opinions. But what that means is that women in this women's style accommodate the face needs of participants. So no one's being challenged. Uh, no one's being made to feel wrong or incorrect. Um, and she noted that women use frequent, well-placed, minimal responses to develop the contributions of others. Um, and I think she suggests that's more frequent than with male speakers. And she also mentioned women using self-disclosure in a woman's women speaking to women to build trust. So women will often reveal things about themselves that are embarrassing or uh, shameful or put themselves in a bad light. And by disclosing something like that, you're showing you trust somebody and you're building up um, a community. Um, so she also then looked at men and did some data research into what men are talking about and how they're talking. And she did find the same thing as Deborah Tannen about information, that male conversation often has a lot of impersonal factual content. And you, that may come from sports or technology or cars. You're discussing the factual details of something. Another feature of male um, talk she mentioned was uh, lots of insults and swearing. Now, insults and swearing are not the same thing. So swearing is one thing, but insulting each other uh, is, is another thing. And she describes these as ritualized exchanges of insults. And the, the word ritualized is this idea that boys, men do this as a sort of way of bonding almost. It's not personal. It's not meant to start an argument. It's just like sort of fun to exchange insults with each other. Uh, she, and, and lots of sort of verbal sparring. Lots of Sometimes you'll hear men in a conversation and you, you might think they sound like they're arguing. And it's actually just this kind of level of how a, a, a conversation goes. She also found that compared to women, um, you could get long stretches in an all male conversation where a single speaker dominates, uh, speaks for a long time. And she called this the expert role because that speaker will be speaking about something they know a lot about. Um, and this is supported by the men giving minimal responses, perhaps not as many as women, but still. Um, and she suggests that men don't use overlapping in the same way that women do. And if men do overlap each other, it's to take the turn. Yeah, so it's used more competitively. Um, and she uh, it's not written here on the PowerPoint, but she says, you know, that turn taking is much more my turn, your turn. 
my turn, your turn with the men. Uh, less of this sort of moving around and overlapping. Okay, that is the end of that.